In this video, we're going to look at fugacity, which is a measure for how a gas behaves non-ideally, and try to look at how we can find the pressure dependence of the Gibbs energy for a non-ideal gas. So we know that from previous videos that the standard pressure, P0, is equal to one bar of pressure, which is very close to one atmosphere. So our standard molar Gibbs energy, that is a function of temperature, is the molar Gibbs energy at that temperature and at the standard pressure of one bar. So we have a fixed pressure for it to be the standard and then it's a function of temperature still. And we know from this differential of the Gibbs energy that it is equal to minus entropy times dt plus volume times dp. So that means that our Gibbs energy as a as with respect to pressure, that partial derivative, is equal to the volume of the gas. So for the molar Gibbs energy, it's the molar volume of the gas. So in order to do that, we need an expression for what the molar volume of a non-ideal gas is. So in order to do that, we're going to look at what we usually look at, which is the virial equation of state. Our compressibility factor Z is PV bar over RT, which is equal to 1 for an ideal gas. And for a non-ideal gas, it expands from there in terms of the virial coefficients. So that'll be plus the second virial coefficient of, if it's B2P of pressure, then it'll be of T times P, plus the third virial coefficient, B3P, which depends on temperature times P squared, plus dot, 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 the fourth will depend multiply times p cubed, the fifth coefficient times p to the fourth, etc. Okay, so solving for volume, all we need to do is multiply both sides by rt over p and get v bar by itself. So v bar, the molar volume, the volume divided by a number of moles, that's just going to equal rt over p plus um, this divided by p is going to cancel out that p, so we're going to get rt B2P of T. Plus, we're going to have RT again here. B3P of T. P squared divided by P is going to be P. Plus dot dot dot. RT times the fourth coefficient times P squared, etc., etc. Okay, so this is going to be useful to us because we're going to know that at very, very low pressures, all gases are going to behave ideally. So, there's, uh, so it can be treated as an ideal gas below a certain pressure. And this lets us do the following expression, that the molar Gibbs entropy is a function of temperature and pressure for some given gas, which may be non-ideal, is the molar Gibbs entropy at that temperature and a very low pressure, very close to zero, plus the integral from this low pressure up to whatever pressure we choose. So from P low, where the gas behaves ideally, up to P. And that will be the integral of the derivative of Gibbs energy with respect to pressure, the molar volume, times dP, integrated with respect to pressure. Okay, so if we substitute in this expression here for the molar volume in terms of the virial expansion and do that integral, the result we're going to get is that our molar Gibbs energy, dt of p, is going to be gt of the low pressure, plus this term integrates to rt log p over p low, plus um, the second term is going to integrate to None of these terms depend on pressure, so it's just going to integrate dp. So it's going to be rt, b2p, and then we can just ignore p low and say it's times p. So it's going to be rt, virial coefficient, times p, plus, do, do, do. And then that's going to include various other terms as they get higher and higher order, rt, b3p. It's the integral of p is p squared over 2 
plus dot 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 and it'll go beyond there the four rt fourth coefficient times p cubed over three etc etc okay so that's all good and well and then we know since this g of this low pressure is going to behave ideally let's pretend that it behaves ideally all the way up to one bar of pressure and then we can use the expression that we got from a previous video we can have that our molar gibbs entropy or molar gibbs energy gt of p low is equal to the standard molar gibbs energy press rt log p final over p initial which would be p low over p naught okay then we add these two equations together substitute in this gt of p low here for this gt of p low this is going to give us our gibbs energy in terms of the standard state g of t and p equals g of t plus if you work out the math for how this rt log p over p low plus rt log p low over p naught um, these logarithms can get combined you'll have p times p low over p low times p naught so the p lows are going to cancel if you work through those logarithms it's going to be rt log p over p naught so this thus far that's just as if the gas was behaving perfectly ideally and there's nothing funky going on but then beyond that we got to include whatever our virial coefficients are doing so we got to include plus rt b2p of t times pressure plus dot 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 things that depend on p squared p cubed etc so all of this is encapsulating all of the non-ideal behavior all of these terms beyond these first two terms here where the gas is behaving ideally okay so what we want to define is a quantity which will encapsulate all this non-ideal behavior as if there was some hypothetical pressure which represented an ideal gas uh, behaving that way so what we're going to define is a function f which depends on temperature and pressure and this is going to be called the fugacity so the fugacity is going to be the function of pressure and temperature and it's going to tell us about how the gas is behaving relative to some ideal gas so we also need to define a standard state for fugacity just like we define a standard state for uh, pressure and we need it to be such that the limit let's let's just go ahead and write this as a limit so we want the limit of f of p and t the limit as p goes to zero is that the fugacity just equals the pressure because as p goes to zero the gas is going to behave ideally and so the, the fugacity must become the pressure when the gas behaves ideally the fugacity will only deviate when the gas behaves non-ideally and additionally we're going to define that the standard fugacity is also going to be one bar it's going to be one bar just like the standard pressure is so that'll help some things out as well so we encapsulate all of the non-ideal behavior all of these extra terms in here by defining f of p and t to be the pressure times e to the b2p of t times pressure plus b3p of t times p squared plus dot 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 on and on and on it goes so what we've effectively done is taken this fugacity here and we've encapsulated all these extra terms in here and if you work through the math of how this term works out and what it does for us you'll find that it allows us to define our molar Gibbs energy as a function of temperature and pressure 
to be the standard Gibbs energy at that temperature plus RT log and now for an ideal gas instead of being the temperature instead of being the pressure divided by P naught it's going to be the fugacity F divided by F naught so the fugacity allows us to define our Gibbs energy our molar Gibbs energy just the same way we would define our molar Gibbs energy for some given ideal gas but uh, instead of pressures we use fugacities so the fugacity is something which can be tabulated if all the variable coefficients are known and there are various functions and tables of what these fugacities are and that allows us a very straightforward way to calculate our molar Gibbs energy if in fact we know what these fugacities are